welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the ROC 3C single board computer. Specifically, what I have here is a 2GB ROC 3C that I purchased from OKDo, OK who charge £43.20 including sales taxes here in the UK and $42.49 plus taxes globally. And clearly, at this price point, the ROC 3C could be a fantastic board for SBC enthusiasts and makers. So, let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have our ROC 3C, which is designed by Radsa, but manufactured and distributed globally by OKDo, OK as well as being available from other distributors, including Allnet. And if you're wondering who OKDo OK are, they're part of the RS group, and for 10 years were one of the manufacturers of the Raspberry Pi. So the fact that OKDo OK are now partnering with Radsa to make and sell their Rock SBCs is very significant. This board should become widely available. Anyway, let's now open it up. It's easy to get inside, no tools required. We just open it up like that. There we are. And uh, yes, oh, a new single board computer. And the bag is not sealed. We can go straight in. Come on, come on, let me in. There we are. We have got a new single board computer. It's always exciting to open up a new SBC. And I think we should compare this with several other boards. And for a start over here, I've got a ROC 3A, which I reviewed back in December 2021. So let's put our ROC 3C down next to it. There we go. And if we bring up the SOC specifications, we can see that the ROC 3A has got an RK3568 with four A55 cores running at 2 GHz, whereas the ROC 3C has got an RK3566 with four A55 cores running at 1.6 GHz. So the new ROC 3C is based on a slower chip, but this does make it cheaper than the ROC 3A, and unlike the ROC 3A, the ROC 3C has got onboard Wi-Fi, and a Bluetooth as well, come to that, which uh, many people will find a significant advantage. Next, let's go over here, where I've got a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and a Raspberry Pi 4. So, let's put our new ROC 3C down in the middle. He can say hello to his SBC friends. There we go. And if we bring up the CPU specifications, we can see that a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus has got four A53 cores clocked at 1.4 GHz. The ROC 3C has got four A55 cores running at 1.6 GHz. And the Raspberry Pi 4 has got four A72 cores running at 1.8 GHz. So what we have here with the ROC 3C is a board that's more powerful than the Raspberry Pi 3, but less powerful than the Raspberry Pi 4. However, like the Raspberry Pi 4, the ROC 3C is available with 1, 2, 4 or 8 gigabytes of RAM, and it's also got better connectivity than either of its Raspberry Pi competitors. So, let's look at the ROC 3C hardware in more depth. As already noted, we've got an RK3566 SoC with four 1.6 GHz A55 cores, and it's also got an ARM Mali G522EE GPU and a 0.8 TOPS MPU. On this particular board, this is then coupled with two gigabytes of low power DDR4 RAM, and all ROC 3Cs have got a wireless module that supports 802.11abgn and AC Wi-Fi, otherwise known as Wi-Fi 5, as well as Bluetooth 5.0. Also on the top of the board, in the same locations as on a Raspberry Pi, we find a camera serial interface or CSI connector for connecting a camera, and a display serial interface or DSI connector for connecting an LCD display. And along the back of the board, we then have a color-coded Raspberry Pi compatible 40-pin GPIO connector, and alongside it, a 4-pin power over Ethernet and recovery header. And down here, there's even what's labelled as a 5-volt fan connector. Finally, on the top of the board, we have an M.2 connector, 
very exciting. And unlike on the ROC 3A, this doesn't have to be used for wireless because we've got the wireless module. And so this is actually M keyed and it'll support a one terabyte NVMe SSD. However, the slot will only take a 2230 size card, in other words, a card 22 millimeters by 30 millimeters. And due to the position of the GPIO pins, you really can't use a longer card. Although I might experiment for a quick test. Turning to other connectivity, on the main lung edge, we find a USB-C port for powering the board. This requires a 5 volt, 3 amp adapter. And next along, we have a full-size HDMI connector. Always great to see one of these. And then next to that, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Spinning 90 on the main short edge, we find a gigabit ethernet port and four type A USB ports. And the bottom one in this stack is USB 3, as we can see from the color. The other three are USB 2, and the USB 2 port here is actually OTG. And I have seen an early picture of a ROC 3C with a physical switch to select device or host for this port. However, if we just change our angle and turn the board over like this, we can see that whilst there are pads for such a switch over here, there's no such switch on this board. And in fact, along from this, we also have pads over here for a real-time clock battery connector. But uh, clearly, this has not been soldered to this board that I purchased in May 2023 from OKDo. OK whilst we're looking at the base of the board, we should also note the microSD card slot. And next to it, we've got a connector for an eMMC flash module. Finally, flicking the board back over, it's always happier the right way up. The last thing I haven't told you about is this tiny little switch down here, which is labeled power key. And I imagine this is a power button of some kind. We'll have to see if the board boots without pressing it. Although maybe this switch releases a magic genie that's trapped in the RK3566. And so there we are, the ROC 3C an SBC selling for about the price of a Raspberry Pi 4 with a bit less CPU power, but with the addition of an eMMC connector, an M.2 connector, and perhaps best of all, a full-size HDMI port. Right, here I am back again with everything connected up as you can see. So let's turn on the power. Here we go, and if we go across to the HDMI output, it's black. It won't be black forever. Come on, computer, do something exciting. You can do it. There it is. Things are starting to happen. And what we're doing here, as we can now see on the screen, is booting into Debian. Debian with an XFCE desktop. And this is running from a microSD card. I downloaded this from one of the websites I'll show you on the ROC 3C in a second. There we are. I've witted on long enough to show you a real-time boot. And uh, I'll now type in the default username and password, which are ROC and a ROC like that. There we are. And here we are running on the ROC 3C. This is not my first boot I have been in already. I've set a few scale factors so things read better on video. But other than that, you're seeing exactly what you get with a clean image. So let's check out what is pre-installed. There isn't too much here. We've got a web browser and things as you would imagine, farm manager, etc. Various settings, as you would expect in an XFCE desktop. We've got a few accessories, not a lot. We've got Chromium and Firefox as the browsers. We've got a media player, and we've got a few things in system. Again, not a lot. We've got HTOP there. Let's run HTOP because some of you get very excited about that. There we are. We can see our four cores. We've got about a quarter of our memory is currently being used out of our two gigabytes as the system is idling along, that's, uh, that's okay. And uh, other than that, don't think there's anything else we've missed here in the, in the menu. It's a little bit laggy, the menu now and then, but uh, things are pretty responsive. Other than the menu, which seems to be a little bit laggy. Anyway, let's launch the web browser. We could have launched it up there. We'll launch it down here, let's be wild. And we're going now into Chromium. And as it comes up, you'll see, we do get this message at the top saying we've got an unsupported command line flag. This won't give us any problems, but I thought I'd leave it there just so you can see exactly what you get out of the box. And as you can see, I've set my homepage to be the OKDo OK software hub, where we can download images for the ROC single board computers. 
And if we scroll on down here, we'll get to the Rock 3 Model C. There it is, where you can see we have Debian available as we're currently running, and also Ubuntu Jammy, that's Ubuntu Server. And we can also download Rock 3 software from the Rancer website. If we just go to my bookmarks, I've got lots of things bookmarked for you here. Let's start with uh, the Rancer site down there. This is their Rock 3 download page. It gives us access currently to the same stuff, but it's good to have the alternative. And we can see down here again, we've got the uh, Rock 3C Debian and Ubuntu server. And further down here, there are potentially third party images not currently labeled directly for the Rock 3C, but I would imagine third party support for this board will increase quite rapidly as the board becomes more widely available. If we go back into bookmarks up here, what else have I got bookmarked to show you? Well, for a start, let's go to Chrome's GPU page like that. And what we see here is very encouraging. Look at all these hardware accelerated coming up. We don't often get those in a browser on a single board computer let alone a single board computer at this price point. And of course, this has positive implications because if we go back to bookmarks and I've got down here the WebGL Aquarium test, there we are, see how that does. Just coming in, all these little fishes, there we are. And it's doing what, just over 20 frames a second, but is, is very smooth with 500 fishes. This is a good result on a below $50 single board computer. Again, we're having this hardware acceleration in the browser makes make such a difference. And of course, this will affect YouTube playback. That's what I'm sure you all want to see. And to go back to a uh, bookmarks and go down to uh, my standard YouTube clip. And this will take a second to come in on this two gigabyte board. So I'll just speed on through till it's actually playing. And here we are, everything is now playing along. And there's quite a few drop frames showing at the start here, 184 currently, 185, but those are all generally when the thing was settling down. If we look as it's playing through, we're no longer dropping frames. We've got good 1080p playback here on the Rock 3 c in the Chromium web browser. How many times have I been able to say that on a new single board computer, let alone one, as I said already, at this price point? This is a very good result. I'm impressed with the streaming media video playback here on the Rock 3 c this said, I should note I applied a simple tip which someone gave me to make this work as well as it does. And specifically earlier, I went to Chrome Flags and I searched for Freeze to bring up the option for the Freeze User Agent Request Header. And I set this to Enable. And apparently this forces Chrome to report the browser as a desktop instead of a mobile device, which in turn provides better support for higher resolutions. Greetings, here I am back again, and I thought we'd do some drive speed tests, and I thought we might as well do it in another operating system. So I've installed here Ubuntu Server just to see if it works, which it clearly does. And we're running Ubuntu Server from an EMMC flash module, but I imaged using an EMMC to microSD adapter, and we've also got plugged in the microSD card on which Debian is installed, which we were running earlier. However, I've not managed to get plugged in and working a 2280 NVMe SSD into the slot designed for a 2230 NVMe SSD. What a surprise, the GPIO pins do get in the way. This is not what the board is designed for. It was worth a go, but it doesn't work. Anyway, let's do an LSBLK, a list block devices, to uh, see the devices on the system, which at the top here, MMC BLK0 is our EMMC flash module, and MMC BLK1 is a microSD card. So let's test the speed of the microSD card first. I've got the HD parameters command here in the buffer, and uh, here we go. It'll want my password, which is rock. I've not changed the defaults. This is just the test. What speed result are we going to get? How fast is the microSD interface on this board? 64.3 megabytes a second is a result. That'll clearly be the speed of the interface because the card here, a SanDisk Extreme Pro, is faster than that. But uh, 64 megabytes a second is not bad for the speed of a microSD card interface on an SBC at this price point. Anyway, let's now also test the speed of the EMMC flash module. We'll just put a zero on the end of there and, uh, and proceed like that. And there we are, about 153 megabytes a second. We'd expect the MMC flash module to be faster, as this result now proves.
guess what? Here we are back again in Debian on the ROX 3C for a final bit of testing. And specifically, I've installed Sysbench and we're going to run the Sysbench test I've set up here at the top of the screen. And this is a CPU test. It'll attempt to factor prime numbers up to a value of 20,000. It'll use all four threads or four cores on the system. And as you can see on the end, we've set it to time equals zero because by default, the current version of Sysbench runs for a 10 second test. This will stop it running for 10 seconds and instead limit it by events. It'll be limited to 10,000 events. And this constraint will come in before it hits 20,000 in terms of factoring prime numbers. So what this will give us is a time to run 10,000 events. And what we're going to do, you're probably ahead of me, is to run this test not just here on the ROC 3C, but also on a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and a Raspberry Pi 4 to see what the actual performance is of a different CPUs on the three boards. So before we run this on the ROC 3C, let's go across to a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. And this is running the 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS. And I just wanted to show you that here, the menu, look at the menu speed there, it's much more responsive than we saw on the, the ROC 3C. And do remember, a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus has one gigabyte of RAM, that's the maximum you can get on one of these boards. So we're comparing a one gigabyte board here to two gigabytes for the ROC 3C and the Raspberry Pi 4 in this test. Anyway, our sysbench command is ready to go, so let's execute it here on the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. There it goes. And it shouldn't take too long. We'll stay in real time. This should be the longest time it takes. It should get faster on the boards after this. And yes, we have got a result of about 9.1 seconds here on the Raspberry Pi 3B+. So let's go across to a two gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4, also running the 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS. And once again, our sysbench command is waiting to be executed. So let's execute it. And this should be faster here on the Raspberry Pi 4. What's the result going to be? Oh, there we are, look, 4.3 seconds. Significantly faster than we saw on the Raspberry Pi 3B+. So let's now return to our ROC 3C. Here we are, and we'll run the test here. Here we go, very exciting. And what's going to be the result? Oh, it's too exciting to bear. Come on, give us a result. 6.936 seconds. So very much in the middle of the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and the Raspberry Pi 4 as we anticipated. And just before we finish off with Sysbench here, because Sysbench is a good way of stressing out a processor, let's go across to a power meter, which is currently showing we're using about one watt of power at idle on the ROC 3C. So let's now run the Sysbench test again and see what the meter reaches as we're using more CPU power. Let's bring back the command and uh, like that. And uh, is the beta going up? Yes, it is. Oh, it's gone to a total of two watts. How much excitement can we bear? It might be 2.4. You never know. We can't tell with, with this particular meter and what it can display. But regardless, it was very exciting and brings us to the end of this video's tests. The ROC 3C is a nice new single board computer at a maker price point. Clearly, right now software support can't match that for the Raspberry Pi, although the hardware accelerated video playback in the browser is very encouraging. And OKDo OK have now put this board into volume manufacturing. And if that makes it widely available, then the ROC 3C could do very well indeed. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I hope to talk to you again very soon.